Welcome to the latest edition of Choice Cuts. I am not Darren Bowsman. My name is Ryan Turek, managing editor of Shock Till You Drop, and I'm here with the real Darren Bowsman. Yeah. How's it going, man? It's going good. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to uh, make that distinction now because there's been some uh, confusion in the past. If we had James Gunn here, we'd be screwed. I know, we'd be. Or J.J. Abrams, too. Or J.J. Abrams, yeah. so I'm told, yeah. <laughs> We're a couple days uh, out from, or a couple days, you know, uh, out after the release of Saw 7, Saw 3D, and since you were such a large contributor to the series, I wanted to hear your thoughts on what you thought of the finale. You know, it, it's hard, I think, going into watching anything you've been this close to for so long. I yeah. mean, Saw gave me my start, uh, so I, I feel, uh, I don't know, I feel still very passionate about every time it comes out. Yeah. And it, it's hard because I keep thinking, what would I do in that situation? In Saw 7, how would I have done it? And, uh, you know, I think Kevin's a great director. I really like the, the last uh, Saw he made. Um, but looking at this as a finale, I, I don't know. I, I wish there would have been more of an explanation point, yeah. I think, on it yeah. that instead, of a, instead of a period. Yeah. I think he did a great job. The traps were violent. The traps were fun. But... Uh, you know, it's the end. If this really is the end, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully in two years when my career washes up, I'll be director of Saw 8. <laughs> so I'm kind of going to say I'm glad they left that door open, but yeah. I don't know if it was a conclusion conclusion. Yeah, I don't think it was the final stamp. I mean, I th it's good to hear that you're actually, you know, objective about it and not completely biased, you know. I mean, it's, it, but I, I completely agree. I mean, it, it should have ended on an exclamation point. And if you're going to go into that, I think you definitely need a definitive stamp. They still left a couple windows or doors open. Well, they open did. I think, you know, the biggest thing I would have, I mean, here's the deal. The, the traps are insane. They're crazy. Yeah. Um, and I think he's got some, some good performances out of the actors. I, I wish, though, and I think the last three minutes should have left you with, like, a punch in the balls. Yeah. Like, you should have you should have been, like, again, that, that thing where at the very end of it, you stand up and just everyone start clapping. But I think that, again, it's, I don't know if the door's been, I think the door's been closed, but it hasn't been locked. Yeah. I, I think if I was doing it, I would have closed, locked the door, and then put, like, a steel door on top of that door. Something that, you know, bringing back, uh, you know, Zep, bringing back Amanda, bringing back, you know, Frankie G and Donnie Wahlberg, and, like, doing something at the very end to basically say, this is it. Yeah. But like I said, I'm kind of glad they didn't do that because I'm, I'm going to be resorting to Saw 8, 9, and 10 very, very soon. Well, what do you think, do you think that they kind of shot themselves in the foot? by killing the villain halfway through the series? No, I think it was the only way that could have worked. And I think that, you know, one of the first things when I did Saw 2, um, I remember I'd never directed anything before. And I go into Lionsgate and they said, why should you direct Saw 2? Tell us why. And, and they, they wanted to hear my version of the story. And I say, capture Jigsaw on page 5. And they said, why would you capture Jigsaw on page 5? That's ridiculous. He's the franchise. And I said, because again, everyone knows he's the franchise and you've got to do something they're not expecting. Capture him on page 5. And so this whole pitch I gave them, they liked and, and let me do Saw 2. When Saw 3 came around and we were looking for a story, I say, kill Jigsaw. And they said, what do you mean kill Jigsaw? He's the franchise. And I said, it's exactly why you kill him. Kill him right here. The franchise will be all of the things he left behind. And I think that um, by doing that, the audience wasn't allowed to guess what was going to happen next. If you're going to kill your villain on the third chapter and you still have four more, you know, I think that's cool. If you're going to capture him on page five on the sequel. So I think that there's a way to keep him around and keep doing things in a smart and unique way. Yeah. What surprised me about the ending of Saw 3D was just how savvy the Saw fans are. I mean, I think they're much more savvy than the Friday the 13th fans, the Nightmare on Elm Street fans. They predicted what was going to come, like, way back by three. Yeah. Or, you know, way back by two. You know, what, do, you, do you agree with that? I mean, like, that they... I, I think that one of the things with Saw um, that we've, we've all strive for, the producers, the writers, the directors that have all come in, is we're all fans of the movies. And we study them, we pick them apart. And we go on the message boards. We scour the message boards. We scour IMDb. We scour House of Jigsaw. Uh, you know, all the message boards and all the horror sites. We look at them to find out what the fans are thinking and what they're doing. And we, we've shaped the movies to be about the fans. The problem with this is that the fans are, as you said, so smart. They're always, you know, the minute we think we've got them, they figure it out. And so it's been, you know, it's been, it's been kind of hard in that way. Because, again, like with Friday the 13th or with, with uh, the Freddy films, you don't really see that as much. You don't have people picking apart what Jason's going to do or what Michael Myers is going to do. It's not like that. But I think with Saw, James, James Wan, right at the very beginning, did something smart, unique, and different. And he had everyone trying to guess the magic trick. And that's what Saw is. It's a magic trick. It's like you know you're going to go in there and that we're going to pull the wool over you and, and, and do something that you're not expecting. So now by Saw 2 when we got them, with, with, again, pulling the magic trick, they started looking. They started trying to figure out where we're hiding the cards, where the sleight of hand is occurring. And I think it became increasingly, uh, increasingly harder and harder to trick the audience. Absolutely. What, uh, were there any traps 
after your term, uh, you know, you're, you're serving your term on Saw that you wish you had done, traps that you were envious of? Well, it's funny, in this, in, in this last Saw, one of the traps that we wanted to do and was written into Saw 2, we couldn't do it, then was written into Saw 3 and we couldn't do it, was the teeth pull. And in fact, Saw 3, if you remember the poster, is three teeth, yep. because they made the poster before we finished the film, and that was supposed to be Rig pulling his teeth out. Um, I, I think anything with teeth just freaked me out. I yeah. just saw Jackass 3D last night. Have you seen it yet? Yeah. The scene where the guy uh, pulls the tooth out with the with the car. I mean, that that ki I think anything with teeth freaks people out. Um, so yeah, I wish I would have done that one. That was a great one. The fish hook one got me. Which one was the fish hook? Where one? the fish hook was down the throat and you oh, had to yeah, pull it up. Pull, oh yeah, that because you know what's so <clears throat> bad about that? It's so simplistic. Yeah. And I think I think that in my mind are the best saw traps. Like one of my favorite traps uh, was saw two, the needle pit, because needles are so. Uh, everyone experiences needles throughout their lives. And uh, you know it's, it's something we can all relate to. And then you pervert that and say, okay, instead of being one needle, let's put 500,000 needles in there. Same thing with like, the hook. It's so simple. It's a fishing hook down someone's throat. And I think to pull that out, I mean that that had me. Uh, that had me. It was gnarly. Thrilled. I mean, also I, I actually did really like. And again, it was kind of a ridiculous trap, but kind of awesome too, violent wise. Was the one that Chester from Lincoln Park was in that he was stuck <laughs> in the chair. Uh, it was a little overdone, but I like the skin. Say, yeah. No, I was gonna say it was really overdone, but I mean. That is horrific because pulling skin and ripping skin. I mean, that's yeah. a, there was a trap I can talk about now that we that we never did that uh, I did want to do that we were going to stitch two people together and it was mm -hmm. kind of like the uh, the the uh, super glue trap. The, the whole idea was to super glue two people together, then stitch them together, and they had to pull themselves apart, basically ripping both of the back of their skins off. Ugh. Uh, but that ended up becoming too complex and too uh, too hard to pull off. In terms of you know, I mean, like criticism, you know, I mean, you think that. Uh you know, in 20 years' time, people will go, yeah, that defined it. You know, that certainly was indicative of the time. And I mean, here, here's what I can say, and I think that it's, I think it's a fair assessment to say this now, that it is, it is a new horror franchise, i.e. Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street of its time. And I think now, here we are 20, 30 years later, and you're still buying Freddy masks, you're still buying Jason masks. I think you're going to continue to see the Billy Puppet, and you're yeah. going to continue to see the Pig. Um, you know, I, I think that that's not going to go away, because again, it was a time in horror that, you know, all of these kids, every Halloween became a tradition. Go on Halloween night and go see the new Saw film. And I think that that's hopefully something that will continue on. In 20 years' time, how do you think people are going to view the Saw franchise? Do you think it's going to be, I mean... Well, I'll still be directing them in 20 years' time. So <laughs> Taking them into space. Uh, yeah, if we can get Pinhead and, and Jigsaw and Chucky, I think we're good.